Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at network segmentation. We'll be discussing broadcast domains and segmentation, problems with large broadcast domains, and then the reasons for segmenting networks. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. On a network, there are several devices, several protocols that send out broadcasts and multicast just to operate and get it done. ARP sends out broadcasts to find that MAC address so we can send data to a device. DHCP sends out discovery requests so they can find the DHCP server. We're sending out all these broadcasts on a network. The switches, they'll propagate broadcasts, meaning if a switch gets in a broadcast, they're gonna send it out all the other ports on that switch, except for the port it got it into. Routers, on the other hand, routers don't forward on broadcast. They stop that. And so broadcast stops at routers. They don't propagate them through. Each router connects to a broadcast domain. And broadcasts are only propagated within that domain. And as you can see here, this yellow square is our broadcast domain. And broadcasts stay in here. They do not go into the router. Switches allow broadcasts through. That's fine. So we have to find MAC addresses. We have to find DSCP servers. But as soon as a router gets a broadcast, it drops that packet. It deletes that packet and doesn't send it on. If you have a large network, and in this example, there's 400 users on this network. There's going to be a lot of broadcasts. It's, it's a lot of extra traffic. All that extra traffic is going to slow down your network. The throughput of good data on your network is going to start going down with more broadcast. And so what we do here is we divide our network up. And you can see as we start off here, this IP address is 172.16.0.0. This is our starting network. What we're going to do is we're going to segment this off. We're going to create two networks. Here we have the two networks we created. And what we see here is we have LAN 1, LAN 2. The network portion is a slash 24, so our first 24 bits, the three octets, that is our network portion, 172.16.0. On LAN 2, our network portion here is the first three octets. Notice that third octet. That third octet is different. That third octet is different in the network portion. That makes it two separate networks. They can't communicate. In order for them to communicate, we have to put a router in there. And so what we did here is we took our 400 users that was on one network, we have spread them out over two. We made two smaller networks. We still have the 172.16.0 network, but now we're starting to break it up into smaller networks. Broadcasts are only propagated within that local network up until the router. And so broadcasts from any one of these 200 users on LAN 1, LAN 2 is not going to hear them. There are several reasons why we want to segment our networks. Segmenting, or what we call subnetting, making smaller networks of our network, that reduces overall traffic. It keeps broadcasts local, doesn't affect anybody else. We use it to look at implementing security, where we want to lock down devices where other people can't have direct access to them. Now... As we look here, there are several reasons why we do segmenting or subnetting. In this example, we do it by location. This example says each floor in our building is going to be a different local area network. That way all the traffic is going to stay there at that location, at that floor, not going to interfere with it. Now, this location, this example uses floors in a building. Another way to use location would maybe be buildings. Building, the first building has the first network, the second building has the second network. Maybe it's one local network per, per office. You have an office in Chicago, an office in New York, an office in LA. 
each one of those has a different network. And so based upon location, you could segment your networks. You could segment it by group or function, meaning put all the administration into one group. You want to make sure they have good access. They have quick access. They have priority because they're your boss. You want to make sure your boss has good access. You put the students into another local area network. They're very inquisitive on your network. They will go and probe your network. So you want to segment them off and put maybe some additional security on there to make sure they don't get into other parts of your network. We have the human resources network put all the human resources computers together, you have stuff like HIPAA, where you have to be concerned about keeping information confidential and private. And so you can set up different security methods there. Another way to subnet or segment would be by device type. Here we have LAN 1, all hosts. All computers out in the office, put it on that LAN. LAN 2 gets all the printers. Big print jobs, they go on the LAN 2. We don't have to worry about them interfering with anybody else. You can set up security on LAN 2 to make sure not everybody's printing out their daughter's birthday invitations. LAN 3, you put all your servers. Once again, we add a little bit extra security in there because that's our servers, that's our data, that's our company's livelihood. We want to make sure it has decent uptime. We want to make sure it has higher security. And these are all valid reasons to do this. And a lot of times we see combinations of this. Maybe you have a location that's a city. And then in that city, you go by group or device type. And so combining these would be, is a solution that happens. It was my pleasure to bring you this wonderful episode on network segmentation. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on introduction to networks for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.